Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My beloved brothers and sisters, Allah says you have to suffer a loss. Sometimes in business, you're a multi-millionaire, but one day the whole business burns down. Thank Allah. Oh Allah, for 40 years, I afforded everything. Today, you took my whole business away. Help me so that when I start afresh tonight, it will grow bigger than what it was yesterday before it was burnt. Is that your condition? If it is, Allah says you've just passed your test with flying colors. And you know what? We replenish what we took from you beyond what you had. That's Allah. It's not easy. It's not easy. Ask those who lose a hundred pounds. They have a sleepless night. Depending on how much you have, obviously. But ask those who've lost something. They really are struggling. I lost this guy actually stole three grand from me. Yes, you can pursue it. You can achieve justice, but don't become depressed because of that. Trust Allah. Allah knows he planned it for you before you were born. He knew it was going to come in your direction. He just wants to watch. What's your reaction and what are you going to do? That's Allah. So Allah promises you in Surah Al-Baqarah, the beginning of the Quran, it's a second Surah. And Allah says, no, we're going to test every single one of you with these things. Your examination questions are already told to you. It's going to happen to you. You're going to get sick someday. Anyway, Allah says, loss, loss in terms of wealth, well, unfus, loss in terms of life. Allah says, someone's going to die around you whom you love. It has to happen. Or you're going to die. SubhanAllah. Have you lost a loved one? Many will say, yes, how does it feel? It was the most difficult thing. I tell you when you've lost a child, that's probably one of the most difficult, difficult times of your life. Something that is very challenging, extremely difficult. Allah knows, Allah knows. A few days ago, I was sitting at someone's house who lost a child. They had a child after a long time. And then when the child was about a month old, perhaps 29 days old on the day of Eid, the child suddenly stopped breathing and passed away within five minutes. Sitting with them, do you know what I said? I said, the reason why I know that Allah loves you is because he chooses those whom he wants to go through bigger challenges and bigger tests. And he chose Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to go through exactly what you guys have just gone through. Some of those who are close to Allah would actually look at you and say, I wish this happened to me. Allahu Akbar. Sounds silly, right? The reason would be if it happened to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And now it's happening to you. Allah chose him. Allah's choosing you. It's going to require a huge bag of patience. And Allah chooses you to engage in that act of worship. Patience is an act of worship that Allah chooses you to go to engage in to whatever degree He loves you. And I'm going to prove that to you with the rest of this verse that I was reading. So may Allah make it easy. You've lost a child, one of the most difficult things, but you've lost a parent. It's also extremely difficult. Let me explain. If you've lost a parent and you're an orphan, Allah loves you more than Allah loves the others. The simple reason he did it for Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Again, look at how you've been chosen for the same test. And that's why if you're an orphan, good news for you is that your success and failure does not depend on whether or not you've had a parent. But it depends on many other factors and a whole host of factors. Because Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most successful ever, his father passed away before he was born. His mother died while he was a little child. See, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But we know most noble, chosen by Allah as the most noble of all messengers, the most, the greatest of all creation, according to our belief. My brothers, my sisters, Allah will test you. Don't be despondent. Life, we didn't come here to just enjoy every day. Whether you believe or you don't believe, you're still going to be tested. When you believe, the tests become easier because you have conviction and faith and you rely on Allah and you believe in Him and you know that you're going to be given something in return and in lieu of your struggles and your sufferings. So Allah, anfus meaning death will happen around you. You're going to lose people around you. Prepare for the day. If it hasn't happened, but, but, importantly, don't become anxious or worried by the thought of something that hasn't happened. Oh, today we were told I'm going to lose my loved one. So now, what if I lose my brother? What if I lose my sister? What if I, that what if is the door of the devil? And Allah says, don't go and say if, if and study probabilities because that's the door of the devil. It opens the door of shaitan. 
That's what Allah says. So if anyone's going to study probabilities and possibilities of negative things that could have or should have or will or might happen, then you've got a problem. Strengthen your faith in Allah. Rely on Allah. It's okay. The day it happens, there we are. The day I see symptoms, I will try and help and deal. If it happened beyond my control, I will either bear patience or if it was a good thing, I will thank Allah for it. That's a mu'min. That's a believer. You'll enjoy your life. Even if you don't have anything, you'll enjoy every day of it. You get up and you pray and you realize, you know what? I got up and prayed because my Lord invited me to do that. Wow. My Lord invited me. Have you heard the invitation? You're going to hear it just now when the Muazzin calls it. It's an invitation. Hayya. What does Hayya mean? What does Hayya mean? Come. Is come not an invitation? Come to what? Come to prayer. Who's inviting you? Allah. Invitation. If we had a dinner this evening and you guys were invited, wouldn't you be excited? I would be. Because I'd get a bit more time with you guys. That's a basic thing. Invited to a dinner. Get excited. I'm invited to paradise and I'm not excited. Don't even get up for fudging. Come on, guys. We do better, inshallah. I challenge you guys and myself as well. We need to strengthen ourselves. Get up a little bit earlier, inshallah, because you respond to the invite of the Lord of the worlds. I've always said the hajjud is a prayer that's not compulsory, but it's by invite only. Allah invites you to it. That's it. You're not invited, you're going to be sleeping. Allah chooses his worshippers whom he wants to get up before Fajr. Allah chooses. So you, you and you like you to come. And then you end up getting up, you end up making wudu and you come. And you don't realize that was your Lord's love that wanted you to fulfill something not compulsory out of love. Consider yourself fortunate. You got up for tahajjud. Wow. That's a sign now that there is a deep connection between you and Allah. There goes. I hope that's motivation enough to wake us up, at least for Fajr. I always get tears in my eyes when I think of Tahajjud. We're all weak. Don't think that I'm sitting here in front of you, so I must be making Tahajjud every day. No, I didn't. Not even today. But it's not like I don't ever do it. I don't need you to know. But all I need you to know is I'm just a human like you. It's not like I, I, I fulfill it every day. No, I don't. In fact, I'm not even regular with it. May Allah make us regular. It's not Farah. I had to clarify that because people look at you and they start thinking this guy must be so holy. Yeah, there are a few holes that we do have. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness and piety, all of us. May Allah, we are all brothers and sisters. We're, we, we have the same struggles. And trust me, we're in the same ship. And that's why we're talking to each other today on a similar level, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's go back to that verse. So Allah Almighty says, we're going to test you. And we spoke about loss and we spoke about loss of life, loss of wealth, loss of produce. We spoke a little bit about loss of produce. Allah mentions it specifically because produce is connected to that which you're farming. Perhaps it may be there one year, it may not be there one year. But if you're not a farmer, you will still be affected by loss of so many food items or whatever it may be in terms of what you sow seeds of that grow. Allah says it might not grow. People were asking me, what about crypto? He said, crypto, you know, you might lose, you might lose. I can't come and tell you halal, haram and all of that because, uh, you know, there may be scope of permissibility, but in reality is if you're not intelligent enough, you're going to lose. Stay away from it, man. Unless you know what you're doing. May Allah Almighty protect us. The point is you may lose and you may lose a lot. If you've lost a lot and there's no way of getting things back. Do you know what, my brothers and sisters? You have to take it in your stride. You have to just make the most of what you now have and get up again and start doing things. Don't lose hope. In a short time, you will be in a better place than you were. I've witnessed this time and again. And then guess what Allah says? And this was the point I said I'm going to mention. Give good news to those who bear sabr, bear patience. Those who bear patience, give them good news. Who are they? Those who bear patience are those whom when calamity strikes them, When calamity strikes them, they say, well, we all belong to Allah anyway, and we're going to return to him again anyway. Subhanallah. 
Allah gave me what he gave me. It was his. He took it back. It's okay. He will give it back to me and he will give me more than that. He's the owner of it before it came to me and he was the owner of it while it was with me and he is the current owner of it even though it's gone away from me. That's a believer. Allah.